Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to our video series on IGCSE Coordinated Sciences. This is Biology Unit 3. In today's lesson, we will be learning about enzymes. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. So, what do you need to know? Firstly, that an enzyme is a protein that functions as a biological catalyst. This protein is made from the genes from the DNA of the nucleus. It is biological because it is made and found in living cells. It is also a catalyst because it increases the rate of chemical reactions without being used up and it is chemically unchanged. Secondly, you need to know how an enzyme works. The lock and key theory suggests one way of enzyme actions. The active site is the part of the enzyme that holds to the substrate. The substrate is the substance the enzyme will work on. Enzymes have a specific and unique 3D shape, and so the active site of each enzyme will be different. Also, each active site will be complementary to a specific substrate. Only one enzyme works on one substrate. This is called substrate specificity. It is also called lock and key. Because only one key will open one lock, just as only one enzyme will work on one substrate. Next, let's look at the effects of the environment on enzyme action. You need to know that an enzyme can be denatured by the environment, for instance, high temperatures or extreme pH. Denaturation is when the enzyme's shape is changed and the active site no longer is specific. The enzyme can no longer catalyze the reaction. You also need to know how to describe and explain the effect of temperature on enzyme action. From chemistry, increased temperature means an increased rate of reaction. With enzymes, this is also true until the optimum temperature of the enzyme is reached. The optimum temperature is the enzyme's favored temperature where its work rate is at maximum. Different enzymes have different optimum temperatures. Human enzymes are usually at 37 degrees Celsius, which is the body temperature. This makes sense for it to work fastest at normal body temperatures. Some enzymes, like bacterial enzymes which live in hot springs, can have their optimum temperatures at 90 degrees Celsius. Past the optimum temperature, the enzyme is denatured and the rate decreases. It is denatured by the destruction of the bonds that hold the protein structure. You also need to know how to describe and explain the effect of pH on enzyme action. pH also affects and denatures enzymes. Like optimum temperatures, enzymes also have an optimum pH. Optimum pH is the enzyme's preferred pH to work in, giving its maximum rate of activity. Different enzymes have different optimum pH, depending on their site of action. Pepsin, an enzyme that works in the stomach has a very low optimum pH, because it needs to work in an acidic stomach environment. Amylase, an enzyme that works in the saliva of the mouth has a fairly neutral optimum pH, because the pH of the mouth is fairly neutral. Change in pH on either side of the optimum temperature, a decrease or increase, will denature the enzyme. The extreme pHs also destroy the bonds that hold the protein structure. Finally for today, let's look at types of enzymes. Many enzymes' names end in ASE, and you can often know what substrate they work on by the name. Proteus works on proteins, for example, pepsin. Carbohydrase works on carbohydrates, for example, amylase. Lipase works on lipids. Lipids are fats. Maltase works on maltose molecules. The syllabus says you should be able to do the following, so check if you can. Define enzymes. Investigate and describe the effect of changes in temperature and pH on enzyme activity. Explain the effect of changes in temperature and pH on enzyme activity. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.